for someone who is so passionate about these social ventures what are some of your challenges when you roll them out um i think it's um to let people see the hope yeah. maybe a little bit uh, superficial mm. but i think our uh, or our sectors no matter we talked about the government uh, the business even the more traditional ngos mm. uh, they sometimes we live in silo there are too many ban- ban- boundaries mm. saying that i oh, wish you just do this a business sector we just um, earn money and then we pay tax with that that's it but i think it's all red tapes that making our world stuck Welcome to another episode of the brand called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon so that you can never miss an update. Our episodes go live at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. daily. I am your host Ashutosh Garg and today I am privileged to welcome a very accomplished individual from Hong Kong, Francis Nai. Francis, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's my big privilege. And hello, everyone. Uh, Francis is the founder and CEO of Social Venture Hong Kong. He's uh, highly recognized and felicitated globally, and he's also a young global leader from the World Economic Forum. He is the vice chair of the Asia Venture Philanthropy Network, and amazingly, he's an ultra running veteran. He's run the North Pole Marathon. He's the he's run the Sundown hundred kilometer race and he's run the two hundred and fifty kilometer Gobi March. So Francis, let's talk about Social Venture Hong Kong. Tell me about this venture and the three pillars you have. Yeah, thank you. So I think um, uh, thank you very much first of all for inviting me. So um, Social Ventures Hong Kong is uh, an organization that I founded um, since two thousand and seven. Mm-hmm. Before that, I worked at um, uh, in, as a business executive. In marketing, advertising, and strategy, mm-hmm. but since then, I think um, my two kids born, that changed my life. Okay. So I find that an organization trying to make our, our world a better place. So I think uh, we we dedicated to um, at first started as a venture philanthropy organization. We try to incubate a lot of social innovation projects, uh, like over forty of them. Mm-hmm. And recent years, I think we also develop a new strategy in mobilizing the other sectors. Mm-hmm. For example, the business. Uh, so we have a new trend called Business 2.0, trying to provide impact strategy for the bigger corporations, trying to get them to work harder in the social scene. Okay. So to me, right now, I think we call ourselves an impact purpose organization, okay. IPO, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, trying to get um, different sectors to work together collaboratively uh, to work on social good. So I think this, that's uh, the basic of our organization. Fantastic. So you know, when I was reading about you, you have three pillars: impact venture, impact media, impact capital. Tell me about these, and if possible, with an interesting example. Sure. Um, uh, for example, the impact capital. I think at first, as I said, I will, we would run a venture philanthropy fund, mm-hmm. but I think to us, um, that's not enough for today. Mm-hmm. So right now, for example, we are trying to um, build up a lot of different uh, new vehicles, also providing advisory for some more traditional philanthropy fund, mm-hmm. trying to get them to work harder. For example, there is one called Community Chess in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. which is uh, one of the biggest and, um, and oldest organizations of funders in Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're helping them in these two years to develop their social innovation fund. Mm-hmm. So I think they, they said that the NGO sector need to reinvent as well, but they, they don't know how. So I think right now we are providing advisory. So it's not a fund that we run ourselves, but we are equipping the others to work on that as well. Okay. So uh, in terms of impact ventures, so being just a funder, we think that uh, globally, the venture philanthropy fund or impact investing and organizations is not uh, enough. Uh, we think that we are spending too much time in the upstream, try to mobilize the capital, but we are not working hard enough to on the downstream, try to get the innovation done. So uh, with the impact capital team, we also need an impact ventures team to try to kickstart. So sometimes we are part of the founder, sometimes we are helping others to incubate, sometimes we are providing advisory for someone to work on this. So right now we have, uh, we we're started uh, to sort of uh, more more formless, like the, um, uh, the Bruce Lee said about water. Mm-hmm. So I think we try to be fluid okay. in providing support to all sorts of um, uh, people to work on the social innovation idea. Okay. So at last, we think that after working on all this good stuff, it's very important to evangelize mm-hmm. or to spread out the work like mm-hmm. yourself, develop a platform to let more people get to know about the impact story. So we find that impact storytelling is very important right now. Mm-hmm. So we set up an impact media team. So by joining force with some of the um, um, 
media guru in the in the sector in Hong Kong. We try to make um, the impact voices more available everywhere, more mainstream. So that's our, our newly set up in the, in the last two or three years. So I think um, that's a that's a right now we call it the three pillar in promoting impact in Hong Kong. Very interesting, and you know all these are what you would call uh, uh, not for profit only or for profit social ventures. Mm. Um, overall, social ventures Hong Kong we are non profit based. But uh, the reason why we don't call it non profit, I think non profit is not fair. Mm -hmm. Why profit is the mainstream and we are non profit? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we call I think more like the UK uh, directions is called social purpose. But I think overall right now while we are developing our different arms. Sometimes when we are co uh, working with a corporate, mm -hmm. uh, we are using a for-profit model. So uh, uh, at overall, I think I think that the social good right now, what we are developing, uh, we're using a, a blended model or hybrid model. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can be a non-profit mm -hmm. to mobilize more non non non-profit mm -hmm. um, grant capital. Sometimes we are for-profit so that we can mobilize the uh, for-profit capital as well. So I think sort of a little bit uh, formless now. <laughs> Interesting. So again, you know, when I was reading about you, you have incubated over 40 social innovation projects. Mm -hmm. For yep. all our viewers and listeners, uh, you know, can you tell me about a few of the projects if it's not confidential? Sure. Uh, I want to spend three hours on this, but I think <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go briefly of a few minutes. No, no, um, we have, I think, uh, 10 years ago, we started Hong Kong's uh, very first wheelchair accessible taxi car fleet. Okay. Before that, no one taxi in Hong Kong are wheelchair accessible. But I think we see that, that as a big problem. So we work with the taxi um, players to launch um, a car fleet called Diamond Cap. So that uh, kickstarted a new movement in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. making a lot more uh, taxi companies now working on the wheelchair accessible taxis. Mm -hmm. uh, we have worked on um, affordable housing because uh, if you get to know the situations in Hong Kong, although we are quite in an urban area, mm -hmm. but uh, there are over 20,000, uh, 200,000 people, sorry, uh, living under seven square meter, mm. 10 square meter for the whole family. Correct. So we are famous with the subdivided units, mm. cage house and things. Mm. So uh, we feel ashamed about that. But I think uh, 10 years ago, we launched a project called Light B, mm -hmm. um, which is a product name called Light Home. Mm -hmm. We try to mobilize some um, capital owner. The landlord rent their house to us without charging market rent. Mm. We, re we ran that to some single mom with the young kids mm. um, under um, severe situations to live over there. So it's a co-living model. So uh, over the years, we have um, worked with the government, worked with the main um, uh, developer in Hong Kong. We have uh, right now 130 uh, apartments, uh, served more than 400 families already. Mm -hmm. Although it's quite trivial, but I'll, we also take this chance to kickstart a new movement in Hong Kong called social housing. So right now, we, we convinced the government to launch a social housing policy. Mm -hmm. So right now, more than 10 NGOs are now replicating mm -hmm. what Libby has been doing. So the last project I want to talk about is uh, Green Monday. Okay. Uh, I myself is a vegetarian. I'm not sure about you. I, I'm vegetarian. <laughs> Great. <laughs> five. High five. <laughs> so, so I think uh, that changed my life. So I think 10 years ago, I was a big meat, big meat eater. Mm -hmm. But I think by giving up uh, just one day meat free, we call it baby step, mm -hmm. which is much, uh, much easier for big meat eater to switch. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it Green Monday. Mm -hmm. So I think the magic is um, after weekends, you eat too much. Mm -hmm. Monday is time for you to fine tune yourself. To restart your body, mm. so uh, but I think uh, surprisingly in Hong Kong we turn the five uh, five percent flexitarian population mm. within within five years turn into twenty six percent. So uh, millions of people now join the movement. Apart from Hong Kong, we go um, uh, over several tens of countries already. So we also build up a value chain called Com uh, Green Common. So we are um, importing a lot of plant-based mm -hmm. um, uh, food going into Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And also we have our own uh, plant-based meat now, like Beyond Meat. We have called Omni Pork. Okay. So uh, in Hong Kong, we eat uh, Chinese, we eat a lot of pork. I'm yep. sorry about it. Yeah, <laughs> but I think um, yeah. Omni Pork is like a replacement. So it's all plant-based, but it tastes and um, the, the texture is quite similar mm -hmm. to, the, to the meat. So I think it's a, it's a good substitute. So right now we uh, formally launched Mainland China, Shanghai, mm. we launched Taiwan, Singapore. So it's from Hong Kong. And uh, within eight years, we launched the Green Monday movement to many other countries already. So that's one of our examples that we work on as well. I mean, you know, what amazing <laughs> examples from transportation to housing to food. Examples are great examples. But tell me, you know, for someone who is so passionate about these social ventures, what are some of your challenges when you roll them out? Um, I think it's... um. To let people see the hope, 
right? maybe a little bit uh, superficial. Mm. But I think our, uh, all our sectors, no matter we talked about the government, uh, the business, even the more traditional NGOs, mm. uh, they sometimes we live in silo. There are too many ban ba boundaries mm. saying that oh, we should just do this. A business sector, we just um, earn money and then we pay tax with that. That's it. But I think it's all red tapes that making our world stuck. So I think overall, I think our challenge is uh, trying to use this social innovation idea, convince people that uh, actually there's still hope uh, to build a purpose around uh, mm -hmm. for our society, no matter how desperate we are, mm -hmm. as we can tell from the, from the COVID, there mm -hmm. are a lot of things that start happening. Mm -hmm. So I think right now, no matter on unemployment, homeless, or the single mom, I think there is a lot of help we should do. Mm -hmm. And that should not be just done by the government mm -hmm. or the tr more traditional welfare. Mm -hmm. We all have that responsibility. Right. But I think it's um it's quite a challenge for us to let people see that actually you can do something. Right, <laughs> right. But you know, but one big advantage, I've been to Hong Kong so many times, it's such a disciplined population. You know, you can get a lot of things rolled out. But how is the acceptability of such amazing social ventures amongst the larger population? Mm. So I think, as I said, the impact media play a role. Mm. Uh, I think even today, uh, you are helping me to spread it to the world. Okay. So right now, I think although we are working in the Hong Kong issues, quite local community thing, mm -hmm. but I think um, all the projects that we do is uh, not into a scale that we could totally solve the problem of our city. Mm -hmm. But I think it's all little inspirations. So the social entrepreneurs that work together with us, I think we always bring them to the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. So um, by sharing their stories and their work in note, no one is perfect. Not our work is also not perfect. But I think all the small tips all the trivial thing we want to spread out the word. I will quote one example. On the affordable housing that we work on, we don't just measure how many houses, how many families will help. Mm -hmm. But I think through the journey, we find a new intervention for these families. Okay. For example, that yeah. most they could live there for three years. Mm. But right now, our empowerment model make them to live within two years and they do it voluntarily. Mm -hmm. it, may, it proves that actually the family can stand on their own. So I think uh, we use these mm. to convince the government saying that, hey, the resources is just one thing. How to make it the beginning of the interventions to empower them is more important. So I think with this, we hope that the media or the mainstream uh, people would get to know all this working you know, so that they could work on their own solutions. Fascinating. So Francis, tell me, before you decide to select uh, one of the many projects that you do, what do you look for? Um, not money. <laughs> we are no traditional investment um, firm. So what we see is um, the impact or the inspirations that we could bring in to the to society. Okay. So uh, we want to uh, break new grants. We want to plant seeds on the crack. Mm -hmm. We want to um, let people see that they could actually uh, awake from the dream or awake by the dreams. <laughs> we, we hope that these, um, we, we collectively, we see new hope mm -hmm. for the city. Mm. Uh, we felt stuck. Sometimes it's just a feeling. Mm. Actually, there is a lot of ways for us, mm. no matter which sectors we are working for, no matter we are just a fresh graduates or uh, university interns, or we are um, um, mature ones, or we are working, or we are retired. We all can work on social good, that's but we need to work collectively. That is so true. I think that's the main message that we want to bring up. Amazing. And like any other, I mean, I, don't, I know you're not a private equity fund, but you know, when you when anyone incubates another entity, you look for an exit after some time. Mm -hmm. My question is, at what stage do you look for an exit from? Uh, and when you say that my social venture is now ready to fly, um, it, we, we are sort of quite mixed model. As I, as I said, I think apart from investing, we also provide advisory. Mm -hmm. We also work on the projects uh, quite directly. Okay. But I think all the more we want to exit uh, as soon as possible. So no matter whether uh, the monetary is more mature mm -hmm. or, or not, but I think when we feel that the owner or the co-founders or the corporate or the organizations that we provide advisory, mm -hmm. they're ready to take it over, we try to push it to them mm -hmm. because there are so many more things we want to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, all the time, we have a lot of things in our minds on the kickstart. So right now, we see ourselves to be, um, I have to say, we are not go deep dive on one idea or two. Mm -hmm. or trying to just mature one one idea and make us rich it's not just like that we want to treat ourselves to be a platform organization we try to bring, build the breadth of um uh, collaborations among the society mm -hmm. 
So uh, no matter we are uh, the government sector or the non-profit philanthropists or corporate sector, we try to work with them. So I think the first day we come in on the new idea, we try to think about exit. So we try not to involve too much. So actually, lately, uh, we try not to uh, invest too much too, okay. because there are a lot of tedious things we need to manage. Mm -hmm. If they could take it on, I think we could just provide the ideas for free for them to let them work on the social good. Fantastic. I mean, what an amazing organization you've created. Mm -hmm. um, my next question to you, uh, Francis, is what are your thoughts on ESG, the environmental, social and governance values for all your social ventures? Mm. Um, I think uh, for all the process that we work on from day one, it all implanted with these ideas. Mm -hmm. but I think ESG right now is quite um, uh, pop in the business sector and the investment sector. Mm -hmm. uh, we see that it's, it's a good thing. But I, I, I also worried that that would be a, a nice terminology that people would just um, uh, make it like a hype. Mm -hmm. Like 10 years ago, we talked about impact investing. No, right. right now, it seems uh, it's uh, died down a little bit. But I think the essence of ESG is... Um, it's actually as awakening inspirations. Mm. We all need to get to know we are not just alone. We need to take into account the environment. We need to take into account the society. Mm. Or we need to take into account our, 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 our staffs or the ways that we are doing things mm. within the corporations or organizations. I think these um, ideas or considerations we think is more important than the terminology itself. It's more important than the SU report that we've written. So I think it's all, all, all the more, I think it's, um, it is a good time for us really to deep down, to rethink and reimagine. So we treat it as, um, as, a, as a set of philosophy Fantastic. instead of just um, a, a set of uh, governance thing. Amazing. So for us, I'm going to move to the next segment of our conversation. I want to talk sure. to you about your running. <laughs> uh, what got you started to run ultra marathons? Oh, wow. Um, that changed my life as well. <laughs> like my plant-based eat. Okay. So um, uh, I think it's, um, as I said, I think mindset is more important. Mm -hmm. uh, for the work that we do, we try to change the system, mm -hmm. but change the mindset is um, equally important, mm -hmm. if not more. So for myself, I think uh, over time, um, uh, marathon or ultra run become my meditation. Mm -hmm. So at first, I, uh, I play a lot of different sports, but I think at the end, I think um, uh, my working hours doesn't allow me to play badminton with friends or, or, or soccer and things. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, um, get a pair of shoes and go running. Okay. But I think um, during the run, I don't listen to music. Mm -hmm. I, don't, um, I don't do a lot of different things. I just um, uh, sometimes meditate, mm -hmm. sometimes think through my, 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 my problems around me. So I think that become my, my um, meditation. But I think um, doing the ultra, like the 100 kilometers, 250 kilometers over seven days, I think uh, uh, it's sometimes in the desert or North Pole, as you said. Mm -hmm. I think that provide me with um, a brand new um, perspective, even to myself. So uh, why I kickstarted all these things, what I'm really interested in. So uh, through the process, I think it's a, it's a journey for me to, to find my authentic, authenticity. Wow. So I think that's so much important to the work that we do every day. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And another question for you on running is that, you know, when you go for these 100 kilometers and 250 kilometer races, how do you prepare yourself uh, before a race? Oh, uh, that's an embarrassing question. I was doing no good in that. <laughs> Sometimes after more time, I, I will practice. Oh. Like that for the desert run, uh, I prepared almost one year. So um, I try to be more disciplined and, um, and because I need to carry uh, all my stuff during that seven days. So it's a self-supported game. So I have to um, um, get the, um, um, carry a lot of stuff on my, on my back every day to go on running and things. But sometimes like the North Pole, we are promoting actually helping Green Monday to promote um, uh, vegetarian, why it is so important to our, our climate change issue. Yep. I don't have too much time to prepare. So actually I got some injury. <laughs> But uh, uh, one of my life journey is uh, in the last few years, uh, because of my injury, mm -hmm. I cannot run. So I think, but through this journey, I learned the most that um, actually things are not that um, easy sometimes. I think, but through the challenge, how to get through it, mm -hmm. I think maybe that's another episode. I have a long story to talk about. <laughs> well, I'm going to do another one with you then. <laughs> so I'm going to now, Francis, move to the next question, next set of questions, some personal questions for you. Mm. Uh, for, you know, for someone who's achieved so much, recognized all over, doing such an amazing social venture, 
what are some of the core values you believe in hmm. um i would say it's still the word hope mm -hmm. if you ask me now i think it's um uh, it's the genuine authentic feeling about hope okay uh we always talked about head heart hands we need to think cleverly smartly mm -hmm. we need to work on hand um for the hands mm -hmm. to work on stuff with baby step even you do not see the end goals like running in the marathon mm -hmm. you need to keep the every trying steps yeah every day mm -hmm. but i think all the more is pointing to your heart whether you have the real faith in it whether you see how important that uh, why you need to build up this kind of purpose mm -hmm. it is the most, is most important so i think uh without hope i i i cannot come back tomorrow but i think with hope every day i i was waking by the dream mm -hmm. every day still at my age i would love to go to work i feel like a, a youngsters it's all because of hope mm -hmm. uh, i think it's also my hope is also the hope for my children for your children for the younger generations yeah. collectively we need to see the world as one we need to build on things together that's a collective hope uh, that one um, is deep down in my heart so well said thank you my next question francis then you're still you know very very young and you're doing so many things from where you stand today what does success mean to francis um keep trying every day mm -hmm. so i'm not successful so i feel that um uh, especially after these two years as you get to know hong kong is not easy no matter about COVID or about the social unrest mm -hmm. so i think the system is not allowing us to do a lot of things right now mm -hmm. but i think um so i feel helpless sometimes to be frank mm -hmm. i work on 10 years to change the world to make a better place but it's not better Okay. I feel ashamed even uh, standing in front of my children. Mm. So every day I feel that I'm, I'm, uh, I have to remind myself that I, there's no success, nothing important that we have built up. Okay. But I think all the more like um, standing in the front of the, um, so, uh, standing in the middle of uh, the North Pole journey or the Gobi uh, Desert, mm. I feel helpless. I can sit down and cry, but no one will help me. Oh. So all the more I think I will keep on making every trying step. So I treat it as a, a success of hope to come, wow. but it's not my success. It's a we success. We hope that a human being can get through this battle. Mm. We find a better ways to, to run our world. Mm. We find a um, better ultimate spirit mm. for us to carry on our sustainable life. Mm. Fantastic. My next question to you uh, is that if you, Francis, were a role model to millions of children, who closely followed you and your life choices what is the one thing you would change in yourself because of them how i change myself mm -hmm. right um i think i would just keep on doing as i said trying every day okay it's a real story a lot of youngsters go around that's because of uh, they feel helpless mm -hmm. but i think uh, they they don't just admire uh, they are not admire admiring our work and things mm -hmm. they just see that oh you idiots keep on trying every day without knowing whether you're successful or not. Okay. I think that spirit itself, uh, may be the only thing that I can contribute to this world. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. And my last question to you now, and this is a question on failure, mm -hmm. um, from the world that I come in, which is India, uh, you are Hong Kong, but let's look at China, for example, mm -hmm. parents never teach children. It's okay to fail. We are always told come first go to the front of the line, etc. And that manifests itself in our behavior patterns. Mm. Yet we fail. So my question to you, Francis, is what have been some of your learnings from some of your mistakes? Um, I, I try to very hard every day mm. uh, to get my work done. So because I love my work, it's my passion. But I, I, I want to talk about the stories that I, um, I cannot run in the last few years. Yeah. So a uh, recent one or two years, I tried to re restart again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then I, 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 I just managed to done um, my very first marathon again okay. after five years wow. last year Correct. before the COVID. Um, at the finish point, I was in tears. Mm -hmm. I, I hugged my wife and uh, deep down, I, I feel a very different feeling. Mm -hmm. Maybe I was trying too hard. Mm. I'm not saying uh, saying to the audience that you yeah. should not try too hard, mm -hmm. but I think uh, we try hard, but it's not on our, our fame. There's no pressure. We don't live in others' um, perspective. I think we just work on our own mm. that we believe. 
So I think every day right now, with I'm trying to be more authentic to myself, what I can do, what I cannot do. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I said, I feel hopeless, but I think every day try to keep on what I love and keep the spirit is something that I can work on. So I would do a smaller run. I don't mind a um, um, hundred kilometers anymore. I don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. But I just uh, keep on keeping my pace. I think that's um, my my learning in a failure. Fantastic. Francis, thank you so much. This has been such an amazing conversation. I mean, thank I'm coming, so much, finishing Ashton. this conversation with yep. so much inspiration from you. The amazing stuff that you're doing. And I sincerely hope post-COVID, I'll come and see you in Hong Kong. Or you come and see me in India. Perfect. Perfect. Definitely. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.